having you today on your program, The Gallery. My name is Mercy Alexander, and today we have a senator in the house from Imo State. His name is Benjamin Chukwemeka. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the program. Our guest for this week is Senator Ben Wajimogu. Right Honorable Senator Ben Wajimogu was born into the family of Wajimogu from Okigwe in Imo State. He is the first child out of 10 siblings. He was a think tank for several board of both private and public sectors. Amongst them is the Nigeria Shippers Council of the Federal Government. He began his political career at the age of 25 when he was appointed the pioneer chairman of the then winning party, the Social Democratic Party, SDP, for Hite Uboma local government era in the early 1990s. He was also appointed the zonal chairman for the party for Okigwe Zone and further served as a member of the Southeast Coordinating Committee for OP 93 which won the June 12, 1993 presidential election with MKO Abiola as our candidate. He is the Speaker House of Assembly in Imo State. My name is uh, Senator Ben Wajumugu. I represent the good people of uh, Imo North in the Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I grew up in the Southeast just before the Nigerian Civil War. Grew up in Umwaya, which uh, is the capital, current capital of Abia State. Yeah. Did my primary school, secondary school within the Southeast. I traveled to Paris, France for my university education, which I continued in the United States of America and uh, graduated in 1986 came back to Nigeria to uh, join my family business. Eventually, I found uh, myself in politics in 1990, when I became the party chairman of the Social Democratic Party in 1990, uh, the defunct Social Democratic Party. In 1992, I became the state vice chairman in Imo State then, the old Imo State. That was before the creation of Abia State. Uh, eventually, uh, after the Babangida transition was truncated, all these uh, political parties were uh, banned and uh, we now moved on to the Abacha transition, which I did not participate in. However, in 2003, I joined the PDP ran for election in 2003 for the Federal House and in 2011 I was elected into the House of Assembly and I became a speaker of my state House of Assembly in Imo State and uh, eventually into, elected into the Senate where I'm currently serving representing Imo North in the Senate. Yeah, you've almost answered all the questions that I need to ask you, sir. But anyway, what gave you that boldness uh, to, you know, go into politics at a, a young age? Knowing fully whether in Nigeria, some people say uh, politics is a, a very deadly game to play. Well, I've always, I've always, my, my, I come from a family that uh, had embraced politics from day one. My father was a politician as well as a businessman. He was uh, one of the uh, major pillars of the Nigerian People's Party, the MPP, you know, that supported Nanda Zikiwe and, of course, that produced the great Sam Mbakwe of Imo State. Um, he worked with him and he was chairman of, uh, uh, vice chairman of the party in the state at the time. And, of course, uh, a major financial of uh, MPP. Well, I, I would say that one of the most, uh, one thing that, that was quite outstanding was in 1979, during the presidential campaign for Wichinam Dazik, where the late Zik of Africa, mm. when he was running for the presidency, came to Imo State on um, 
campaign and I had to spend the night in my family house. And then I think I was uh, I was 40 years old. And that's that when I met him. I, you know, we had a, a family meeting Me where everybody met to take and all that we discussed. And um, I did. He he kind of encouraged me into politics, and uh, you know I, I I tried to find out from him because we had it was a legend, you know there was some stories kind of about him. Mm. He was reputed to have uh, the keys to the River Niger at the time, and all he needed was to open the River Niger, and everywhere would be flooded. Sorry. You know that was, they say there was a witch that she that he encountered, and he put the witch inside a bottle and bottled it. So I asked him all these questions, you know, oh, as a yeah. young boy, I wanted to know the truth about this. At the end of the day, he gave me a copy of his uh, uh, autobiography, My Odyssey. He encouraged me to also read the autobiography of other world leaders. And he did tell me that um, I should strive and be a leader and do not be shy to get involved in politics. So I guess Zik inspired me. You wow. know, to be uh, not your dad. meeting him. No, my dad was my dad was one of those who supports politicians. He wasn't really a, a front line politician. <laughs> yes. You know, he was a financier and all that. But um, I, I I have run several. I've I've won. I've lost many more times than I have uh, won mm -hmm. elections. You know, so I guess uh, it's something that I'm committed to. Yes. No. Sir, in few years you were the uh, speaker, House of Assembly in your state, you know, and you were able to do what a lot of people could not do. What, what is that thing that inspired you to achieve all that? Well, uh, well, thank you for saying that. I first time somebody is uh, giving me that kind of compliment <laughs> because uh, you know it's very difficult to be complimented when you're in office. However. I would say we try to do our best, and uh, the, the truth is this. Uh, I, I, I went into politics not because I didn't have a job. At the time I went into politics, I had businesses. I, I built my first factory when I was 25 years old. It was a polyurethane foam factory. I built uh, a, food, a, food comp a food company. And, you know, before I was 25, I, I owned a food company. Yeah. I also built my hotel in Abia State, which is an 86-room hotel, which opened in 1997. So these are some of the things. I, I wasn't looking for business. I wasn't looking for work. You just you know, it's something that I believe in. It's, it's a passion that I have to serve. I've always wanted to contribute my little quota to uh, the development of uh, people. And from the time I came back to Nigeria, I lived, you know, completely uh, all my time in, in, in the southeast between Owere and Omoaya. So I have lived among my people. I know what they need. I know what there's no part of Imbo State today that I do not know. There's no part of my zone that I do not know. I believe that people who have such understanding and uh, you have I had uh, 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 a liberal arts education in America mm -hmm. which is quite robust you know, giving your insight into almost every aspect of life. So for me, it's an opportunity to impact on the, my immediate environment. So when I became a speaker, I, I was already part of the society. So I didn't need to be told what was needed. I didn't need to be told what was important. Because whether we like it or not, in this country today, we're still trying to provide the basic necessities of life for our people. And we have not been able to achieve that. We don't need a PhD to know that all we need to provide in this country are those basic needs: is food, shelter, and then uh, health, and of mm -hmm. course, uh, uh, guarantee of, uh, uh, of security. You know, so uh, those are the things that have actually, you know, have, have actually thrived and worked towards achieving all the time that I've been in, of, in office. Yes. Now, so in 2016, you were declared the winner of Imo North's um, signature. What have you been doing for your people since then? Well, it took quite some time to come to the Senate. It was a struggle to get in here. And um, uh, by the time I came in, the budget of 2016 was already far gone. 
the 2017 budget was already in progress and um, the, the president submitted the, 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 the budget here in October, a few, just less than a month after, about, about a month after I had That's assumed right. the office, you know. So, however, um, I have also, within the last uh, less than one year that I've been here, been able to, um, you know, focus, you know, on youth empowerment through agriculture. Um, we've uh, identified that in my senatorial district, which is made up of about six local governments, that we have over 12,000 hectares of land, arable land, which has not been under cultivation because, uh, you know, we come from the rainforest and most of these areas are overgrown with large trees, which requires a lot of money to be able to uh, pull them down and, um, you know, and then unfortunately our, our farmers have not been assisted by government, you know, to uh, exercise this uh, uh, cultivation. Because, you see, what we, what we usually see in the South is, is, instead of seeing people who are farming large expanse of land, mm -hmm. maybe a farmer who is only able to eke out one plot of land or two plots of land will just be farming there. Mm -hmm. Because they don't have the capacity to bring down the streets. In fact, some of this land I'm talking about today have never been cultivated, maybe since the creation of Adam. Oh. You know, so yeah. what we're doing currently is that uh, I mobilize resources, personal resources, to start you know, uh, clearing this land, to make them available to our farmers on a contract farming program you know, to uh, begin to cultivate uh, in agriculture. So we are hoping that by the time we or clear most of it. We, in the first phase, we are targeting 2,400 hectares. Okay. And uh, we want to get our youth and our women Sorry. to, you know, be involved in that culture. We provided equipment for clearing. We, we are providing tractors. We are providing um, extension officers who would help them. And indeed, we are also going to train them in certain applications. We are also uh, uh, going to set up uh, processing, processing facilities like uh, 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 cassava processing factory. We're going to build oil mills. We're going to build uh, rice mills. That is already in progress. Okay. And uh, we're hoping that some of these you know, processing factories can take the products that are going to come from not only these farms that we are developing, but other ones that people are, you know, also developing. In the area of aquaculture, you are aware that Nigeria produces less than 2.5 million tons of uh, fish, where we need about 7 million tons every year. Mm. So uh, there's a gap of about 5 million tons that requires, you know, to be uh, uh, supplied. And mm. we are now in the process of uh, training and mobilizing about 200 youths and we're wow. going to build uh, fish ponds for these 200 years. Mm, that's you know, nice. We, uh, um, not only that, we're going to build, we, the cost of building and uh, uh, equipping it, including fish and feed, for the duration of their production lifespan, will be supplied to these young, young, young yeah, people. Yeah, and at the end of production, we shall offtake that is to buy up whatever products that they have uh, right. produced in order to uh, make funds available to them. We'll buy it at the uh, ongoing market uh, rate. We want to see how we can, you know, uh, do in a circle of, in a year, do two circles, you know, produce like 200 this circle, 200 in that circle. We believe that if we are able to achieve, even if it's 500 or 400 uh, fish farmers, in the next two years that have become quite proficient in uh, fish farming and maybe are able to uh, eke out a living, you know, meaningful living producing in agriculture mm -hmm. in our rural area that people, younger ones, can see, you know, can be mentored by, you know, they can find out that you don't need to go and live in a city in order to eke out a living. So mm -hmm. we want to show an alternative to our people that you can also make money from agriculture, mm -hmm. that even the young people, because if we engage them, they can put them away from, you know, crime, crime 
mm. you know, kidnapping, yeah, drugs, and all yeah. that is affecting our youth today yeah. in the society. So this is what we are doing, and we believe that um, by before Christmas this year, most of these things will have come into place. We also have a program where we uh, want to empower market women. Oh. We have 64 wards, mm. and we want to reach out to about 50 market women in mm. each ward and want to give them like 25,000 naira each. We're looking at oh. those who sell tomatoes, Petitions. who sell, yes, uh, ground nuts, you know, who fry akara. These are the people that are 20,000, 25,000 naira would Can't make sense to. Okay. And we believe that such, such, such funds will stabilize them and then, you know, give them the capacity to grow. I did a lot of that when I was a uh, speaker and I saw the impact it made in the society and I believe that is something we should continue. We're also um, registering um, a microfinance uh, 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 institute that will help reach out to a lot of uh, cooperative societies within my zone, you know, to help, you know, source funds for startups. We are partnering with Central Bank okay. to do some training and, uh, you know, capacity building for young graduates, you know, in my zone. We are looking at uh, the first phase is 600 youths who will be trained for six months. We are paying all the training costs mm -hmm. and all that for the 600 youths for training. And after that, Central Bank will in turn assist them to raise between 5 million to 15 million naira oh. to either invest in their existing businesses or to start a uh, fresh, uh, fresh business. Yeah. We are constantly running, uh, we have a partnership with Google okay. now to train young, women, young men, 200 per local government on the IT uh, platform using their uh, even their smartphones, all you need to do is qualify, is to be uh, educated, that mm. you can use a phone, a smartphone, you own a smartphone, you can come in for training, Google will bring in the trainers, and at the end of the day they will be issued with Google certificates wow. That's for that lovely. training. That should take place in the second week of uh, September. Wow. You know, wow. These That's are programs nice. that we have. A lot more I call her on board, but you know, can't really finish that in one interview. Senator Ben is a humanitarian, a philanthropist, a man with a large heart, a compassionate man, and a devout Christian. He has won several awards, among them is Industrialist of the Year 2000 Award by the Nigerian Chamber of Commerce. The Best Speaker, Nigeria Award Fellow, Institute of Marketing of Nigeria. The Paul Harris Fellow Award by the Rotary Club International, Inugu, and many others. Right Honorable Ben has also received over 20 chieftains and titles across Igbo land. He is married to his delectable wife, Ellen, and they are blessed with three children. Now, sir, let's forget about politics. Let's talk about how you relax when you're tired and uh, you want to relax. How do you relax? Well, I relax. You, I, I, yes, I do once in a while. I, um, I, I, I read a good book. I like magazines. I, of course, I get to sleep. That's it. <laughs> that's that's part that's of relaxing. Relaxation. However, I, I'm still one of those that believe that um, you never get too old to once in a while, you know, go to a lounge or go to a club and, yeah, okay. and let and your shake head your body down and uh, all of that. You know, I like staying out with friends and then, you know, hanging out and talking about politics mm -hmm. and the social issues. So I, I travel, you know, I like uh, when, I'm, when I'm outside Nigeria, you won't find me in malls shopping, you probably will find me in museums. Mm. And uh, in the places of interest where I go to catch up on, on those things. Yes. Before we leave, I will want you to say one of your words to the youth out there and also those who have the same uh, profile with you and they probably do refuse to do one or two things now. With the little you have, God has blessed you, you're able to give back to the society. I want you to advise some of our leaders out there through this forum and also ad advise the youth who think. Success just come up by when you wake up and oh wow that's money. 
Well, uh, my, my advice to um, youths all over the world, in, indeed, especially in Africa and in, in uh, uh, Nigeria, is that you have you, you determine for yourself where you want to be. Nobody in life can determine for you where you want to be. It doesn't matter whether you started from the top or you started from the bottom. It is where you want to be that you end up being. I have seen people that have come from top go down and end up in the gutters. People, of course, have come from the gutters and gone up to the highest levels. Yeah. You know, it is you that is the individual that must, you know, sit up and say, this is what I want. You can never go wrong by hard work. You know, hard work is the only way that you can be sure that you can, you know, be productive and be meaningful, live a meaningful life and be able to succeed. You must use your time well. You must understand that at every point in time, there's a time for everything. There's a time to play, there's a time to work, there's a time to be young, there's a time to be old, and there's a time to even get very old that, you know, or you, that at that time you are no longer productive. So now that you're young, it's the best time for you to conquer new space. I, I keep asking, especially young Nigerian guys, I remember in the 70s, you know, when our parents, especially those of us, who, who were born in the Southeast, and our parents were given 20 pounds, no matter how much money you had in your bank. Mm. And within two years, a lot of our parents were building houses, mm. you know, with that 20 pounds, and the, the, the Southeast recovered, you know, or seriously from that civil war. Mm. And it all because of determination and the hard work of the men of those days. So we need to rediscover those things that our parents did. It's very, very important for, for us as youth. So, uh, and even if you try and you fail, you have to keep trying. I didn't win in one day. It took me a long time to get to where I am. You know, when, when I won when I, in business, my first business crashed, my second business crashed, I built a factory, it got burnt. You know, I kept on plowing through. Mm. You know, I, I, and I, didn't, I didn't accept defeat for one day. In politics, I ran for election in 19, my first election in 1990, I got it. 1992, I ran, you know, I was disqualified. I ran in 2003, <laughs> you know, 2007, 2011, and I'm here today. You know, mm -hmm. so uh, that nothing comes easy. Mm -hmm. It is your determination. Sure. Look at our president. He ran for uh, the presidency three times, but he believed and he kept on running. Mm -hmm. Today, he's the president of Nigeria. Yeah. So I, I believe that uh, our youth should learn to persevere and to be determined and to work hard. Mm. I believe if once they're able to uh, imbibe that, they will be successful. Well, my advice to our leaders is that um, God has placed us all in a position to be who we are because of a reason. Mm. And when we are given a position and we are unable to uh, 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 carry out the responsibilities that God has given us, then you know, we fail God, you mm. understand? We, mm. we, we, that means that what we have been given, we have not shown, you know, uh, we, 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 are, we are incapable of the position that God has given us. And, you know, it, it, it's so unfortunate that our leaders are the same people that end up, you know, uh, uh, in this country especially, in mm -hmm. Nigeria, you, you find that it is our leadership that ends up breaking all the rules and all the laws that we make by ourselves. Yeah. You know, we end up ridiculing the very offices that we occupy. And we are not able to mentor the youth because what we do in our private lives and official lives, you know, gives the wrong image to the younger ones who believe that that is the way to go. Yeah. So my advice is that people should learn to mentor others. Let us learn that you cannot be a permanent secretary, you cannot be a governor, you cannot be a minister, you cannot be a senator, and be the richest man in your society. You know, by stealing so much money and buying houses and buying so many cars Exoticals. and all the, those who their parents acquired so much money in the 60s and the 70s, 80s and 90s, today others are buying those properties from their children. You know, and it doesn't, it doesn't get them anywhere. Your children will be who they are by their own tint of hard work and, not, and the name you leave behind and not by how much money that you have left 
Yeah, so we should strive to live a legacy and a good will. Mm. I think that is what I benefited from the good will that my father left. Mm. I can say that 60% of what I am today is because of the name that my father left behind and not by what I have uh, tried to achieve by myself. I believe also that my children will leverage on the name that I leave behind. Mm -hmm. And that is what the legacy is all about. Thank you very much, sir. Welcome. Sir, we're so grateful for you honoring our invitation to be on the gala. We say a big thank you to you, and we just have to call it a day. Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Yes. Thank you, my beloved, for being part of today's program. If you want to be part of our program, why don't you follow us on our social media and do? I still remain your host, Mercy Alexander. Bye and have a wonderful week. Thank you.